This video is some real self-indulgent meta commentary. We're talking about content that talks about content that talks about content. So if you're into that sort of crap, strap in. And if you're not, okay, hi, or bye. I don't, I don't know. There's this tweet on Twitter from twitter.com from at Mia is divorced that says, is there an official style guide for commentary YouTube? And then in it, we have four screenshots of some different thumbnails from different YouTubers, all of them about the Colleen Ballinger situation and all of them the same thumbnail <laughs> the content creator big all big and on the left of the thumbnail making some wacky face this fucking idiot going oh this person gabby bell going oh i can't believe she said that oh i can't believe she did that green is not nigger nick is not green going oh, oh. and then we have jake doolittle going mm, you messed up <laughs> yellow text with dramatic crap on it she made a song i'm losing my mind i am sp Speechless, bro. What are you doing? So what's going on here? Well, basically they're getting my ass. They're getting everybody's rear end because we're getting roast online for being copy paste YouTubers. And whose fault is that? Well, it's Mia Coles, the person who posted this tweet, Mia Cole. She exposed us. She emasculated us. She made us look bad and silly. Get her out of here. Kick her out. I'm just playing. Uh, Mia's great. She's a friend of the show and she's got a great channel. And this tweet is just pointing out the stylistic similarities here. But you may notice here that this tweet has 2.3 million views. Those ugly ass thumbnails is one of the reasons why I got bored of commentary channels and upgraded to video essays. Okay, that is totally valid uh, and I agree with you and I hear you and I see you and I think that's good. I sincerely hope nobody over the age of 13 is watching videos like this. Can't watch YouTube anymore because every YouTuber is just so some guy and why should I care about what they have to say you missed a girl and also that's mostly true though actually <laughs> commentary YouTube needs to die again they either gave us the worst take on something or recycle the same exact opinion that everyone else has in defense of these videos they say different stuff so they do say wow that apology was bad but they also say different stuff you know I go watch them why not I'll leave them link below but that's not the point of this video I'm not here to defend the sanctity of any content so why am I talking about this uh what what's going on here well First of all, I thought it'd be fun. But second of all, I want to just pull the curtain back a little bit and talk about, you know, formatting on YouTube, how this sort of content fits into the broader YouTube ecosystem. And specifically as it relates to this whole Colleen Ballinger stuff that happened like three days ago. When this ukulele video dropped, I have never seen YouTube look like this. A zombie horde frothing at the mouth. YouTubers crawling and scratching and blah, trying to get the content out about it as soon as possible. Because it was super trending, it was a wild video to watch, and every Everybody immediately gave their take to the point where we got FOMO, it's FOMO. For people that upload content frequently, it's a trending topic. I blame the streamers, but you didn't hear that from me. I was, of course, one of those zombies in the horde. Yeah! I don't normally make daily content, but for the last week, I've been trying it out, and this was the perfect opportunity to just try and bust out a quick video on a trending topic, and I did it. Saying that I'm a zombie and acknowledging the fact that this was functionally an algorithmically driven public shaming event, where the first people to arrive on the scene and talk about it in their content content were the most likely to, in scientific terms, pop the fuck off. None of this absolves me from the fact that I was there doing this very same thing. Guilty is charged, send me to the slammer. And what comes with being a part of that zombie horde is optimizing your content thumbnails, which brings us back to these goobers right here. I'm just kidding, these are all friends of the show. To clear up any misconceptions, these are done obviously for the algorithm. Thumbnails are for clicking on. If you do a big face and a yellow text and a clear depiction of the content of the video, no nonsense, no damn clickbait, people are going to be more likely to click on it and therefore your video is more likely to do well. Yellow text, I blame Curtis Connor. That's who I first saw the, do the yellow text and it worked for him. So I copied that and then I copied his hair and mustache. And look at me now. I'm still just a f little weird fucking guy. <laughs> you could refer to this phenomenon as the Mr. Beastification of the YouTube thumbnail. His thumbnails are pure clickability. It's his face doing the soy face that I unfortunately took part in. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. Editor Noah, cut in the clip of me doing my thumbnails for this this video. <laughs> yeah, there's me. You're probably wondering why, what the fuck is going on here? It's a formula. You follow the formula. It helps your videos out. When these thumbnails are presented outside of the context of a YouTube feed, because when they're in the YouTube feed, it's one video among a video from other creators. You click on that video because it's the most, oh, when it's taken out of context and presented in this way, it's actually really embarrassing <laughs> because first of all, obviously how copy and paste this format is. But secondly, and mainly the thumbnails are not content. They're not meant to be put in a gallery. If you print it out, out all my thumbnails and put them on a wall, I would burn down whatever house the wall was on. Obviously there's counter examples to this rule. There's some people that make really cool thumbnails. I like when people use artists to make their thumbnails. Some people just do stylistic flair, make it cool and artsy, put some soul into the product. But every decision to do something like that or deviate from the Mr. Beastified 
thumbnail, this costs you money. It costs you capital C, capital. And so that is the monetary incentive to getting clicked on. You can imagine a dial here from artiste, not just artist, artiste, all the way to algo slut, slut for the algorithm. In terms of YouTube, you know, the needle's slowly, I think, moving this way because of Mr. Beast. And there's really no moral element that I want to add to that. It's just the function of the site, a trend in behavior among creators that obviously optimizes their growth, but results in horrors like this tweet where four people are doing the exact same thing, all hitting the trending topic at the same time. And we're clones, basically. From this context, we're clones. So I guess I say all this to say that if you're roasting us for this photo, I 100% get it. And I also agree, and that's, I'm attempting to give us a little roast in this video. But I also find this really interesting because this is the first time I've seen something like this happen where YouTube content, something from YouTube is stripped out of that context and onto Twitter. And it was kind of a culture shock to see like what we as a sort of collective commentary community, insofar as a community of creators actually exists, it's mostly just audience overlap networks. But to see this here like this, it's wild to me. I don't know. Wild and weird. Maybe. Uh... All right. So next I want to talk about the sort of role and purpose of commentary content. You love us for our unique voice. You love to hear our unique perspective. Our so, 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 ha, ha, funny jokes. You're here to put us on the phone while you're doing laundry, while you're driving to work, while you're taking your doing stuff in the toilet, shall we say. But that's kind of how YouTube works. It's the nature of having content long form or medium form on a phone. What I did find really interesting here was the sheer number of comments on both my video and these videos, as well as on Twitter, where people were saying that they watched all of these videos or like three or four of the videos covering this topic from commentary creators. From the outside looking in, I could see how that sounds like absolutely insane. Just look at the thumbnails. This is all the same thing, covering the same stuff, same length roughly. But the YouTube comment Commentary consumer is interesting in that way because it seems like they're just here for the vibes. They watch a lot of it. They binge. It's cool and normal. If you're one of these people, comment. Why? Why would you do that? But actually, I'm just curious. Like, do they all show up in your feed and you click them one by one? Are you subscribed to all these commentary creators so you just want to hear their different stuff on it? Sort of running in tandem with this is another thing that I noticed in the comments since I started posting daily is people saying, yum, yum, yum. Thanks for feeding us, boss. Keep shoveling that hot slop down our gaping throats. <laughs> Gross. And that's another thing I'd never really considered about YouTube that tried and true tuber fans fans are here to watch you. They're here to hear what you have to say, regardless of whatever it is you're talking about. In some ways, that's cool. You know, it's flattering and dope. I'm not gonna act like that's not cool. And in other ways, uh, arguably more significant ways, it is demonic. Because the more I post, the more I'm realizing that that draw towards filling the void of content and supplying that need is like a gravity tier force. It's insane. I'm recording this video at 10 p.m. on a Friday night. I'm going to probably edit it until 1 a.m. and then set the video to upload at 4 a.m. Then I'll go to bed hoping to wake up for a Christmas style surprise one of 10 video. This has been my life the past week. It's been sort of an experiment. It's really fun for some reason, I think because I have the fucked up weird brain of a YouTuber, but it's also deeply evil. It feels evil. It feels like I'm shoveling myself bit by bit into a giant machine that's being ground up and then squirted into little cups and then those cups are being handed out. I don't really know how to rectify that situation or explain it beyond that. Um, so yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. Uh, fuck it, we ball. Okay, bye.